Hey, welcome here. Yeah, I'm sorry uh, I'm not a tech guy. I had a couple of things here to do with the camera, but I'm glad to be here with the Agora Unconference 2011. I want to thank everyone for the invite, Ross and George, for making this possible. I do appreciate that. My name is Mark Stevens, and uh, if you're used to listening to my show, you're used to the, 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 you know, the live production of getting, uh, you know, having problems like this. Uh, but I'm glad to be here. And uh, I'm the author of a little book called Adventures in Legal Land, where black is white and white is black, and other shocking discoveries from America's courtrooms. And um, I'm working on a new book, and I do a radio show, for those who don't know, which is probably most of us. Uh, I do a radio show called The No Stay Project on LRN.FM, No Liberty Radio Network, and it's live every Saturday from 2, well, let's see, from uh, now that I'm on uh, Pacific Time, 1 to 4 p.m. Pacific Time. We started doing it three hours a few months ago. Uh, so that's every Saturday, and the object of the show is, of course, building a building the agora, building a, bringing about a voluntary society, which is what this is all about. And um, I want to talk a, uh, a bit today, not just about the show, but the show I think is part of, of, of course, of of bringing about a voluntary society and using the media uh, to do that. But uh, for those uh, who are not familiar, why do we, you know, you say, well, we talk about, we talk about a free market. Why do we want a free market? What's the point of having a free market? Uh, what's the big deal? Uh, because we don't like to be told what to do. People flourish and, and prosper when we are, free, you know, when we're left alone, when we're left to our own devices and uh, we don't have someone, uh, you know, ordering us around or, you know, especially the motivation. What's the motivation to produce and be productive if someone is just taking it? So, of course, uh, we have to acknowledge that we don't have a free market now. Uh, anytime we have uh, government, of course, could be just a group of men and women providing a service at the barrel of a gun, uh, pretending to protect your life, liberty, and property. Uh, so, you know, they, they, uh, you know, with the licensing and all the restrictions and zoning and all this other stuff, we know that we don't have a free market now. Um, but we have to acknowledge that. Uh, we have to, because we have to know, you know, if we... Uh, we, there has to be the goal. There's, so what I always talk about is putting government out of business by providing a better service at a better rate and bringing about a voluntary society where people, when they see the uselessness of government and they see the alternative in action, if they see the market can provide all the services and protection that they want at a better, ser at a better rate and uh, a lot more effective and you can hold them accountable, then people will have that, that evolution. They'll start to realize, well, government really isn't ne necessary at all which is amazing because I was talking to someone just last night, and it's incredible how when you do discuss abolishing government and getting to a voluntary society where you can have people who are absolutely adamant about, and some radio show hosts, of course, are really good at this, where they're absolutely adamant about how destructive, how wasteful, and how just incompetent government seems to be. But the moment you start to talk about, well, why don't we just abolish government and have the market take care of it? Oh, then, then they start going crazy. Uh, or they, you know, you won't not throw the, the, the baby out with the bathwater as if there's anything good about the government. But uh, we need to examine what government is before we start getting into this. So it may be all half for some, but maybe new for some. Uh, government's just a group of men and women providing a service to the barrel of a gun. Uh, they're pretending to protect your life, liberty, and property, and of course, uh, that's supposed to be, you know, the stated end. Well, the means to get there are totally contradictory, which is why we're all here today and talking about this, because uh, they have to violate your life, liberty, and property in order to <laughs> get you, you know, your support. So um, that's a, a huge problem there, that the, the means must be consistent with the end, and that's what, uh, what we're, we're, we're looking to do here. And so we need to, one of the reasons why we need to keep this in mind is because when we're starting to build the Agora, we're trying to build a free market, is uh, we're going to have a lot of resistance. There's going to be not only people in the market that are resisting it, but we have the people called government who are going to be actively resisting and actively attacking. So I'm going to mention this again later, but I want to bring up uh, right here at the beginning, uh, if you're familiar with uh, the Van Nothaus case where Liberty Dollar was raided a number of years ago, all the silver uh, that their customers uh, owned was seized or stolen by uh, people called the United States government. Well, he was just convicted uh, a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, convicted of, um, uh, what was it? It was counterfeiting. 
<laughs> which is unbelievable. Uh, but what's important for us today when, we, when we're going through this, uh, because the, the, one of the main reasons why people don't want to abolish government is because of fear. That's what it all boils down to. It boils down to fear. That's what's stopping everyone from doing this, because the only thing that's really stopping us from having a free market is fear. But it's legitimate. There's a, there's a damn good reason for it, and so uh, and I'll revisit this later, but uh, we spoke about this on my radio show. It's been going around the Internet. Uh, there was a U.S. attorney, Ann Tompkins, had made this uh, quite, uh, <laughs> wow, this this is this is cause for you know because uh, especially what I do on my show I make it a regular part of the show to always advocate the non-payment of taxes and you know non-violent non-cooperation and uh, so when you hear something like this from this U.S. attorney after the verdict uh, these people are serious now just real real quick a little background uh, the Liberty Dollar was completely voluntary. Uh, Van Nothaus and uh, the Liberty Dollar people did not force anybody to, you know, buy their product. And I like the government, they weren't forcing people to do that. Uh, it was on a voluntary take and leave basis. So, uh, unfortunately, what they were doing was like, they were talking about currency and going after the Federal Reserve. And, and uh, they put, uh, uh, not in God we trust, but trust in God, I think it was. And, uh, that shouldn't have been done. I'm not saying that they made it a criminal, but I would have just made it silver, stamp on there, or Lysander Spooner, if you have to have a face, or, and, uh, and just have the, the, the weight of the silver in there. Uh, anyway, they, got, uh, they were shut down, you know, shut down, and after the conviction, this U.S. attorney, Ann Tompkins, this is where you see the, the serious irony here, <laughs> Ann Tompkins, who has no voluntary support, and Van Nothouse, which was all voluntary support is considered the criminal. So uh, the irony is sure is not lost on this audience. This is what U.S. Attorney Ann Tompkins had to say after Van Otthouse was convicted of providing a valuable product to the market on a voluntary basis. A product, by the way, that has almost tripled in value since they arrested him. It says, Attempts to undermine the legitimate currency of this country are simply a unique form of domestic terrorism. Wow. While these forms of anti-government activities do not involve violence, they are every bit as insidious and represent a clear and present danger to the economic stability of this country. Really? We are determined to meet these threats through infiltration. Infiltration. We are determined to meet these threats through infiltration, disruption, and dismantling of organizations which seek to challenge the legitimacy of our democratic form of government. Wow. Uh, so uh, when you have things like this, an e-goal was shut down, uh, yeah, there's absolutely cause for uh, concern here. We, we need to be cautious. We need to be smart about this. But uh, this, this idea uh, that using an alternative to the Federal Reserve System is, um, is quite incredible here. Um, Anti-government activities do not involve violence, but she calls it domestic terrorism. But terrorism using violence to bring about political change. Gee, uh, thinking of the founding fathers. Uh, think about what they did in Iran, uh, Iraq, uh, bringing, uh, oh, we've got to bring democracy to Iraq. So they shock and awe, I think, would qualify as uh, terrorism. What I want to focus here on before I get into building the Agora from the ground up, she's talking, to, she's, she's giving a warning here. This is something that we should already be aware of. Uh, infiltration, what does this mean? Well, you can look here on the viewer, and uh, we can see how many people uh, are viewing there. And um, any one of them could be a, an agent. We don't know. I mean, I get them on my sh on my. Uh, uh, you know, I have I've had agents call me for years, uh, trying to set me up on something. Uh, happens all the time. They'll even pay for a consult. And you know, so I mean, I'll, I'll give them the time, but uh, you know, they're not kidding anybody. But they, and they'll get on forums, not just mine, but they'll get on all sorts of forums. They do the whole Facebook thing and whatnot. They've admitted to uh, to doing this. They're really easy to point out, though, because they're always advocating violence. I mean, 
I don't want to help them out, make it harder for us to, you know, know when we've got an agent provocateur in the midst. But they're always advocating violence, and and our whole thing, the reason, you know, our, you know, the whole basis of this is the the if we're talking about anarchy agorism, is that the main rule is do no harm, and so we abhor, and the reason why we're here, unless you're an agent. Is because we abhor the initiation and use of physical violence. We don't use violence to uh, sell products and, and services and whatnot. And uh, so the, the means must be consistent with the end. So we are always advocating and living by, um, well, to a degree, uh, you know, unfortunately when we pay taxes, we're, we're violating non-aggression principle. Uh, but we, we believe that the initiation of physical force is wrong and that uh, a society does not have to be built on violence. So I want to, you, you know, when we talk about these things, the infiltration is extremely important because we always have to keep in mind, not that we have anything to hide, I know I don't, uh, but you have to be aware of these things. Uh, jokes can be taken out of context. Uh, you have to, so when I do a workshop or I do something, I always do it with the intention, we know we've got some filthy agent there. But you know what, and it's an, it's an opportunity to teach them that we're not the enemy. Um, the enemy is, is anybody who's initiating force and not dealing with you on a voluntary basis. So remember what this Ann Tompkins has, you know, has, this is a warning. She's telling you, she's in plain English, because they tell you all this stuff. None of this stuff is really secret. We are determined to meet these threats through infiltration, disruption, and dismantling of organizations which seek to challenge the legitimacy of our democratic form of government. That's, uh, you know, you look at that, and you're like, wow, Bitcoin works pretty damn well now, you know. There's, there's no organization to, uh, <laughs> to dismantle. So that's something to keep in mind. So as, as Agora's and building the free market, it is by nature uh, completely decentralized. There is no central authority, like, you know, to, to take out. Uh, which is which is always a good thing. Just one of the more one of the other benefits of the agora. But building a free market, what does that mean? To have a free market, uh, we have to acknowledge that we're autonomous. I don't like to use sovereign because that's a that's a political word. But we're autonomous. We're in control. As long as we are in control of our rational mind, uh, we're autonomous. Which means we have to borrow from Andrew J. Galambos, 100% control over our life and uh, liberty and property, and zero percent over somebody else's. So all the market is, all we're talking about is, is free trade, laissez-faire, uh, is, is the, and like Le, but Le Schaefer pointed out, the Freedom Summit uh, in, back in December 2010, all we're talking about is the free exchange of property. Two, autonom two or more autonomous uh, men and women or individuals are, are trading. That's all we're doing. We're trading, we're freely trading a property. The, we don't have a free market now because we've got third party, violent third parties who are intervening in that. So the idea is to, uh, to get to a free market, which we can start working on today, is to start trading freely. Now, it sounds simple, <laughs> but there's a lot of problems there. I always get on the radio, and, I, and I'll do it here, uh, even for the, the agents that are listening or watching this, and it'll be uh, available uh, also, after it's recorded, uh, don't pay taxes. I openly advocate on every show, I try to do that on every show, is uh, nonviolent, non cooperation. Don't pay taxes, don't get licenses, freely trade among, your, among ourselves, and don't worry about that. Is there a risk? Hell yes, there's a risk. But there's a risk even if you have a license, there's a risk even if you pay the taxes. I mean, one of the worst, what is, what is one of the biggest red flags that the IRS has? When, when they're attacking people, when they're looking to attack people. It's a spike in money. That's what they're looking for. The biggest red flag is a spike in money. So it could be completely legitimate. I remember when I did one of the biggest nighttime radio shows in the world. I let everybody know. There's going to be a spike. In, there wasn't. <laughs> but I, I figured there would be. Uh, and so I said, look, there, and, and, and as of, there's going to be a spike in sales. I'm doing this huge radio show. And so I warned them, please, don't lock my account. Don't do this. Don't, you know, uh, there wasn't this huge spike. So, but uh, still, there was a, wow, there was a little one. But uh, uh, that's, what, you know, that's, what, that's their biggest red flag. The other one is just making more money. Any, anybody who's ever dealt with the IRS, uh, you, you know, with the, the working with one of these uh, enrolled agents or one of these tax preparers, will tell you 
that the I guess it's like a mathematical formula. As the more money you make, okay, as that goes up, so does the number of the percentage of audits. So that they're, they're, they're definitely related. So, but the the spike in money or income, if you want to use that, is one of the biggest red flags. Um, also, getting licenses. Uh, if you're getting a license, we'll use California as an example because they have a license for everything. I mean pretty much e to wash hair <laughs> requires a license, which is just the tax. Uh, uh, just getting the license, uh, which is always compulsory, but just getting the license is creating a paper trail. Uh, and, and this is something that, that I advocate, that whatever you can do to cut that paper trail so that there's no reporting to the IRS or to the Franchise Tax Board, the, 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 the closer we're going to get to a natural free market. They, they, you know, they, you know, they're going to have to do some kind of infiltration like, like Ann Tompkins talked about. Uh, but an example of this is if you have a business license, and even if you have no reporting whatsoever, let's say you're doing things kind of like the way I do it or the way a lot of vendors do it, a lot of independent contractors do it, you have zero reporting to the IRS or to the, uh, the state, the state uh, predators. That business license will be used as uh, what they think is evidence. And they'll say, well, so I work with a woman that was retired uh, she was, I don't know, mid, mid to late 80s, and she got this enormous bill from the Franchise Tax Board. And what they were claiming was that she owed this, you know, let's say $100,000 because she hadn't filed a tax return in, I don't know, like 25 years. So she, uh, she contacted me and said, look, I've been retired, and I have this business license because she used to, uh, she was a cosmetician, co well, I'm going to mispronounce the word, but she, she was a hairdresser. And she had been retired for all these years, but she kept the license, the business license, which is just the tax. She maintained that just so that she can get the products for her children or grandchildren her family so she can get the products cheaper. So I get in touch with the Franchise Tax Board, and they tell me that, you see, they think that when they make this thing against you that it's presumptively correct. Well, it's only presumptively correct when it's based on facts. So I called them up and I said, look, the woman's been retired from, you know, for all these years, and she just maintains the license to, to get the product, the hair products cheaper. And they said, well, she has to prove it. She has to prove she did not work. Well, that would be proving a negative. That's a little difficult. So do you have any receipts? Do you have anything to show that she had? Do you have any evidence that she actually did work? Uh, of course they did, and they wound up dropping it. Um, because most people, out of fear, see that's the whole theme here, out of fear they just uh, just pay it. Uh, it's not worth it. Uh, and I've seen people, you know, where the franchise tax board, where even with uh, you know tax attorneys or CPAs, people who should know better, where they they take the burden of proof upon themselves and actually try to prove a negative, which you cannot do. Instead of putting the burden on them, you know, remember he who makes the claim bears the burden of of proof. So um, just having that business license is going to be a detriment to anything you're trying to do in a free market. It's going to make everything a lot more difficult because even without reporting, they're going to hit you in, with, a, uh, with a tax bill every single year. And then, of course, from there, they have the liens, they have the levies and whatnot. Another thing is, is, is when you're looking at the fear, it, it, we have to you know, network, obviously. No man's an island, of course. We're trying to build a network here. We're trying to build a free market. We're trying to build the Agora. And n there's not too many things that are going to hurt your business and your network as much as getting an attack from the IRS and the state tax department. Uh, because that's where you're going to see where your real friends are. Uh, because out of fear, they're going to scatter. So whatever kind of market you may have developed at that point, a lot of the people that you're doing business with are going to run away from you. Okay, uh, that's that that's because of the fear, because they don't want to be attacked. Because what is Ann Tompkins said here? We have determined to meet these threats threats through infiltration, disruption, and dismantling of organizations which seek to challenge the legitimacy of our democratic form of government. Well, I'll, I'll challenge the, Demo the the democratic form of government right now. The means are inconsistent with the end. You have no voluntary support. There, there's your, there's your challenge. Uh, eat that. So uh, that's something that needs to be kept in mind. Uh, I think there's actually less risk of being attacked when you don't have the license. 
Because for one, it's not necessarily going to be where the IRS is coming after you, the state tax department. It may be a local licensing or, you know, the city business license or something like that. And, and let me tell you, from, from personal experience, when you, and you can get this, a lot of these videos on my website where you can hear these people for themselves, it's 100% bluff when it comes to taxation. Nobody owes anything. It's just it, they, people pay because, well, the gun's against your head. It's out of fear. But you can hear when you challenge these people, they won't be able to prove that you owe the tax. And uh, my latest article, What Qualifications, is just more evidence of that. And I've done this with city business taxes, too. I had the franchise tax board that was coming after a, a client, and they wanted to... Uh, you know, they say they said he owed so much in income tax because he had a business license. Well, I was able to get a two-year stay of proceedings on that because I went to the the city officials in uh, it was in uh, Northern California to try to work this out. And they're supposed to have now you're supposed to be able to challenge this. And we offered, look, we're going to pay ten years in advance of the of the business tax just to get the hearing that he's supposed to have for free to challenge this, this, business, this, this business license. They wouldn't do it. They wouldn't allow a challenge. Now, the only reason why they don't allow a challenge is because it's all BS. It's all, you know, it's all, it, it, they, they're just making it up as they go. And you need to challenge them. I would rather challenge the business license than have to deal with the franchise tax board uh, on an income tax issue or the IRS. So, you know, you kind of pick your battles. So that's one of the things I advocate, of course, is not getting the business license. Don't get it. Uh, if, if, if you have to, it, it maybe at the least just do in, institute something, some kind of administrative procedure or challenge them and make calls like I do and get, at least get something started to challenge it. But if you can, just avoid the whole thing. So one of the things that I'm looking at doing and that I want to help build, because I do, the radio show uh, is every Saturday uh, for three hours now, and that, I think, is, an, is just a fantastic way of, of reaching the market. That's who we're trying to get, and promotion. So one of the things we're looking at doing is working with farmers markets, where it's a little easier and a little, rest, risk, little less risky to bring services to the market. You know, and, and that's actually like the, the real agora, like if you look at, uh, at, at ancient Greece, where agora you know, comes from. Uh, that's really, you know, it was the open market. It was people going and bringing their, 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 their livestock or whatever, their, their produce to the market. And I think that's a pretty good way, one of the ways to start that, or to, to do this is to start encouraging people who are vendors at these farmers markets not to get sales tax, uh, you know, not to get that, not to collect it, and not to get any kind of license. And um, Austin is a really good area. I have one of my, uh, my affiliates is in Austin. And I have an example of, of uh, why it's so effective because it's not because doing the business like that, uh, the community can see not only are you providing good service, but if you're attacked, like what happened to a good friend of mine, uh, we call him Yeoman, on the show, uh, he's a really good example of of the ripple effect. So it's not because if we challenge this and you're bringing your service to the market and you're being consistent with the principle of do no harm. Uh, when you are attacked, it's going to be an excellent opportunity to demonstrate who the real problem is, and that's the, the regulatory agency or whatever uh, attacking you. So what happened with Yeoman was they had a, a family farm in a rural part of Austin, Texas. And we, this is the contraband turkey case uh, for those who are familiar with the show. And what happened was he decided to... You know, he had a farm, and, and they had turkeys and chickens, and they had eggs and whatnot, and they were going to provide the community, uh, I think it was actually in a 30-mile radius. So it was quite, a, you know, quite a, a, an effective uh, farm that they had going in business that they were running. And what they were doing was providing their poultry and their eggs and whatnot to the, this area, this 30-mile radius, this community, or these groups of communities, and they were doing it without asking for permission. They were just bringing the product to the market, and they asked no permission other than to voluntarily trade with the vendors and the customers that they had, that they had, uh, they had built. And they built quite a, quite a farm, uh, business, family farm business here because they provided a valuable product to the, serv to, to the market at a reasonable price or at a competitive price. And I don't know the details or remember the details of how they came under attack. 
uh, but they did. And they resisted initially having inspectors come out, but they eventually, you know, had inspectors come out and they inspected things. And they wanted, uh, they did their little report, and it was an administrative process, and uh, it went to an informal thing, and I helped um, Yeoman with this. And he confronted them. Basically, he wanted evidence to show that their regulations were actually applicable to him, because they were not accusing him of any wrongdoing other than not complying with the regulation. Uh, and so when he confronted this room of attorneys at this informal hearing, they didn't want to discuss the applicability of their regulations. See, that's something that they want you, through fear, to just accept. I say, yeah, don't you challenge it. So it was, nothing was accomplished there at the informal, so we had to go to a formal hearing where the, you know, um, an attorney was representing the, uh, an agent lord. This is, that, that's, that's the name he was, agent lord. And so uh, we had to go through an administrative law judge, and she was an attorney. And um, our main focus was show that the regulations are applicable. Show this. So when it got time for cross-examination, uh, and, and I'm going to post this whole thing when I get an opportunity, but it is three hours long. I couldn't get Agent Law to shut up. Uh, no matter how many times I objected, I, I was coming off like a prosecutor. <laughs> Objection is this leading to any evidence. Uh, but when I got an opportunity to cross-examine the agent, and I think, uh, now mind you, they're looking for a $22,000 fine. Twenty-two grand. Keep that in mind when I, when I tell you, you know, this next part. Now when I questioned the agent from the health department, the Texas Department of Health, when I questioned him on whether Yeoman and his family farm had any, uh, had caused any damage to the community, they said, no. I said, well, or do you have any evidence of any wrongdoing other than the regulation? Do you have any evidence of wrongdoing? And they said, well, no. Do you, do, are there any complaints about the family farm and their products? No. Did any vendors complain about the product? Anybody get sick? I mean, was there any problems or any health issues? No. So I said, except for your regulation, this man has done nothing wrong. And the agent said, well, yeah, he, he's done nothing wrong. He just didn't comply with the regulation. Okay, so the only thing, so what I was able to do then, now that's, that's pretty important because this is making an impression on the agent. You know, he, he's thinking, wow, uh, I'm assuming this. $22,000 and the guy didn't hurt anybody. All he did, I mean, he... Twenty-two grand? Gee, that's like a parking ticket for a thousand dollars. I mean, what's what the, what the, what the hell is this crap? So uh, this is what I'm getting at. The the point I'm making is that I think the agents and the people that are involved are thinking about this. So what I was able to bring out was uh, well, one, the agent couldn't prove the guy was within the state of Texas, which which is pretty interesting in and of itself. Which is something you really got to hear. So I'm doing my best to get these this audio up on the website. Um, but when it came time to prove the regulations were applicable, now, re now remember, the agent is under oath. He's done his little hand to the square, and, and he's sworn his oath. And um, it gets time to prove, you know, show the facts that the regulations, which the whole thing is based on, were applicable. And they wouldn't allow it. That's when the cross-examination stopped, because we had already proven under oath, the agent admitted, unless they're within the state of Texas, the regulations don't apply. So now I'm trying to get through and walk him, have him walk me through the process that he went through to connect the law to my client. Now, he couldn't prove he was within the state, so if you can't prove he's within the state, you can't prove the regulations are applicable by his own admission. So what I was able to bring out was that here you've got a group of men and women forcing themselves on the community with no voluntary support, going after somebody who is providing a service to the community on a voluntary basis with no complaints. That, you know, so I, you know, I think this makes an impression. I think it's very important not to see them as enemies, but we don't want them attacking. So even though this took place in September and they wanted a $22,000 fine, we've heard nothing back about a decision. So I think an impression was made. I think they started thinking, look, this guy hasn't done anything wrong. Uh, they're probably, you know, look, we may not like it, but it really doesn't justify a $22,000 fine. Uh, so 
we're making an impression with them, but we're also doing something to the people in the area. So the people that know the family farm and know that they were under attack, they saw that they were standing up for themselves. And this is something extremely important, why we do things like Porkfest, why we do things like Libertopia, why we're doing the unconference now. We need to get together. We need to be uh, networking and getting together and building this network. And knowing that we've got people like Ann Tompkins out there that want to attack us for freely trading among ourselves, uh, we need to stick together, we need to stand up. So when we see someone like Yeoman standing up to the man and, and being an adult, and taking responsibility for, uh, for freely trading and not asking for permission from, from the unproductive. When we see that, when other people see that, that will embolden them. And it should. Uh, it's unfortunate that tribe mentality kind of you know, kicks in. There's not much we can do about the tribe mentality. That's just a product of evolution. That's the way we're, we're hardwired. Uh, but people need that. They're going to see that. So they're going to take, you know, so they can see that, that Yeoman is being very successful in providing a service to the market without permission and standing up to the man. And what I believe is defeating their attack, they're going to be able to do the same thing. But we need to know that there's going to be the support there. That's why things like the CD Evolution uh, Fund uh, is such a wonderful idea. And so. What I'm looking to do, what I think we need to do, is using the radio show, using these networks uh, it, to help promote the show, we are also promoting this free market. And one way to do that is with the micro stations. Where, so if you listen to LRN.FM, the network that my radio show is on, uh, that's one of the things we promote, and it's one of the regular things. That, and uh, so we've got a number of micro stations that carry And So what you're doing is we're broadcasting and advertising and sponsoring the market and networking without asking for permission. You know, it just seems to me to be counterproductive to uh, want to build a free market and do so by using uh, <laughs> production, you know, and broadcast like this and then asking for permission to do that. Uh, it doesn't work that way because we know that Ant Com Tompkins is determined to meet these threats. Yeah, free trade is a threat. Of course it's a threat to these people. <laughs> it undermines their whole existence. Uh, they're going to do it through infiltration, disruption, dismantling. We're not going to ask them for permission. So th this has to do with building the market, networking, and not asking for permission. So it's kind of like a cross-promotion that we're doing where vendors and whatnot, whether they're online, whether they're actually participating in the farmer's market, for example, or promoting the show and getting the word out and educating people and getting people to know about the unconference in Agora, and uh, we oh, on the show un, are able to then promote their you know what they have uh, and what they they they're um, what they're providing to the market. One of the things that's so important about this networking and getting together with people that view the world the same way as us that you know to do no harm is that. Uh, we need to, you know, to, to be able to cut off that paper trail and stop the reporting. It's very important that we work together. Uh, so, for example, that I need a closer, for example. I mean, I need someone to help with sales, which could be done completely between us and doesn't have to involve any kind of license. It doesn't require any kind of, there's no reporting. It could be completely anonymous. Uh, it doesn't have to involve any of that. So that's an opportunity to where somebody, uh, this is just an example uh, that we need to do across the board, uh, generally, where... Uh, if we can network and f work with people like me and like like Ian Freeman and uh, uh, Sovereign Curtis and uh, Larkin Rose, for example, who will be speaking tomorrow, uh, where we can not have a conventional job and not have that reporting, not have to have that silly tax called a business license, we're able to do so that with, with minimal risk. Yes, we know that they're doing the infiltration and whatnot, but we have to take some kind of risk. I mean, there's a risk to everything. But working together and building this network, whether it's online or, you know, well, not it some of it's online, some of it's actually, you know, like with the farmer's market, uh, we'll be able to get more people in and able to work together so that we can cut that off. We can cut off that paper trail, and it's not as easy for them to, you know, we're not as big a target. We, they don't see it as, you know, uh, when you have that, that business license that's in the computer, and it's, you know, it's just much, much easier to track you. 
so that is that is something that's really important. But how do we get over this fear? How the heck do we get over this fear? That's the huge problem. I mean, I'm sure if you know we could take care of the problem with fear, people today would start doing business without a license. So people today would start, uh, you know, or, you know, start doing business in a way that did not require a license or, or any kind of reporting, or they'd stop filing in the returns. Uh, you know, April 15th. That, that's next month. So uh, it, it's the fear. The fear is the big problem. So the, it always comes down to what the hell do we do about the fear? Well, one, you have to know that we're, there's, we're not alone. That's why things like Pork Fest and Libertopia, doing the radio show and doing the conference is so important because people need to know it's not just me. I mean, it feels like that at times, but it's not just me. We've got radio shows, we've got networks that we're building, and it's, it's, it's a matter of just getting together. Uh, you have you know, so that is a big one also. I'll throw this out there too, since we're talking about building the market. If you're in the Austin area and you need to get over some fear, get yourself into a uh, into a combat class, something to help to, to to build your confidence, because we have to stop giving lip service to uh, to, to to these concepts. Either we we're serious about freedom, we're serious about the Agora, or we're not. And you know. I'm, you know, I almost was going to stop doing the radio show because I wanted to be able to show, look, what are we doing? Every week I want to be able to show what have we done this week to help bring us closer to the goal, which is a voluntary society. And um, thank goodness people were picking up the ball and started doing it. We had a number of radio stations, micros, unlicensed, yes, unlicensed broadcasters uh, uh, step to the plate. And, uh, and take that risk. Is it a risk? Yeah, they know exactly where you're transmitting from. <laughs> if you set up a micro broadcast, you're going you're gonna to be dra- attracting some attention. So, of course, there's a risk. But the risk is minimized when we do it smart, and we know that there is a support system there that, uh, that, that, will, that if we are attacked, will, um, will be there to support us. And one example of that is where when people go into court, uh, they need to know that we're not alone. We're building a community here, so they need to see some evidence of that. So what I talk about a lot is if you are attacked by a bureaucrat, that when you go to court, and you should always stand up to them, never just lay down. I mean, even for a $28 part, my two last two bureaucratic attacks were just parking tickets, and my wife just paid the 28 bucks, just, just pay. No, I'm like, yeah. Don't stand up to these people. If they're going to get my money, they, they, they're gonna, I'm going to be kicking and screaming the whole time. And uh, well, and those were, were thrown out. Yes, it took some of my time, but you know it's a principal thing. Uh, make them work for it. Uh, uh, when you go to court with something like that, you can, as long as you're a professional, you let the clerk know and let the bailiff know to to tell the judge, look, um, I'm here from the media. We're observing the judge today. We want him to know out of courtesy because we're doing a series of shows on judicial misconduct. Just just let him know out of courtesy. And uh, it does put them on better behavior, but it's things like that we need to do to support each other. But uh, if, if you're in the Austin area, you need to take uh, some combat lessons to overcome your fear. Not that you're going to physically attack them, but combat training or boxing or whatnot. Uh, not only do I use that after talking to the IRS all day, uh, it does help build your confidence. It's just a general confidence builder, which is what we need to be able to do this. So. What you know, it, it 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 all boils down to it, uh, which I think is really unfortunate, <laughs> is that it boils down to an issue of fear and how to overcome the fear. So take some combat training. Hell, get in touch with an NLP practitioner. Uh, I have a friend of mine uh, who also does it here in the Valley, uh, in, in Phoenix. Uh, but that's what it comes down to. You know, no matter what options we have, and there's so many ways we can go about building the Agora. A lot of it boils down to standing up for yourself as an adult and trading voluntarily with others without fear or well without being paralyzed by the fear the fear may always be there but it's a matter of overcoming that so i think one of the the most difficult things about getting to a voluntary society is overcoming the fear to actually live without asking for permission so we need to stop giving so much damn lip service of course to freedom and just talking about it you know because one of the things is uh, you know, the means must be consistent with the end. Well, if we're trying to build a voluntary society, if we're trying to build a, in the, the agora, the free market, well, paying taxes, that's pretty, and, you know, that's the antithesis of, of doing, of building that. So we need to get over that fear. So, uh, do, you know, 
you, you need to, you know, this is why it's so important to network so you, you can get together with people who have gone through this. Uh, so do what you need to do to get over that fear, but take some small steps. Start using alternatives, for example, to the Federal Reserve System. And what we could do is start using things like Bitcoin, which I think is going to be the other. I think it's, uh, you know, from what I know about it, it's, it's wonderful. So one of the things that I'm doing, uh, in addition to the radio show and everything else, is uh, having my book, Adventures in Legal Land, available hopefully this week as an ebook, and I will be accepting Bitcoin for. Uh, e-copies and uh, also other electronic files that I have available like the scripts that you can be used in court and whatnot uh, so that's good we also should encourage bartering and uh, and community currency which community currency is based on your hours uh, and um, I've had a number of people on the show talking about that so that's something that's very important to do but you know the more people that we have I think the less fear people are going to have. It's again, it's, it's that whole tribal mentality that we're hardwired with, uh, which is something w why this is so, you know, so important uh, that we're doing this today. Another thing before I'm out of time, and I, I can't see, I, I know the, <laughs> I'm supposed to be able to get uh, messages here if there's any questions or comments, but um, maybe they just haven't come up yet. Um, Another thing we need to, to start looking at as far as helping to build the Agora and to lower that, that fear that people have is we need to be constantly, relentlessly attacking this so-called legitimacy of, uh, of, the, of, of government. Uh, this is what she said. You know, she says attempts to undermine the legitimate currency of this country. Well, one, of, it, it's there is no legitimate currency of the country that is based on violence. Uh, that you know, everyone is forced to use this credit system, and uh, uh, you know, the, any any legitimacy there is is ridiculous. So I think, you know, as as in addition to doing business and freely trading without asking for permission is as you know that's one of the aspects we also need to be attacking the perception of legitimacy and we do that through just questioning you know call up like I do and uh, and ask and you know let them know you're recording that you're a reporter from the show and 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 start attacking the whole position that they have any voluntary support so one of the questions that you ask you, you could just ask anybody this you just ask them point blank, look, since all taxation is compulsory, what evidence is there that government has any voluntary support whatsoever? It, it's, the, it, it's this constant eroding at the perception of legitimacy that they have that's going to help us when we're just providing a service to the market you know, without permission. So people are less inclined to look at you and I as doing something wrong. Oh, he's not paying us fair. Well, no, he's not. You know, when people see government for what it is, just a violent gang of, of killers, thieves, and liars then uh, they're more inclined to, to, um, to join us. So one of the things I talk about in the new book is taking advantage of the bandwagon effect. That's just, a, a, again, that's that tribal mentality that we're, that we're hardwired with. Uh, so when enough people see that, uh, it's nonviolent non-cooperation is, is an excellent way, and that's, and, and that's something that's tied into building the Agora. We can't build the Agora without nonviolent non-cooperation. That is the, the, that, that's the end we're trying to get, and that's the means we're going to use to, to be able to get there. So that's very, very important, nonviolent, non-cooperation. Uh, and, and what I started talking about on the show last week is, you know, of course, we want to do it smart because we've got, we've got these predators like Ann Tompkins out there uh, who want to infiltrate, disrupt, and dismantle. So we have to keep that in mind, but we have to look at their support systems. And this gets back to what I was talking about. We can't we shouldn't view uh, government, individual governments, which you know each p cop or licensing agent is a government unto themselves. Uh, we shouldn't see them individually as the enemy. The enemy is the idea that it's okay to force people to pay for a product. That's the enemy. The enemy is this idea that it's legitimate to provide a service at the barrel of a gun. So we 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 don't want we want to foster good relations with them. And uh, hey, if there's somebody out there with a security company, for example, I've, I've said this for a long time, uh, provide the police officers with an opportunity to get out and get a real job and actually ma yeah, make more money. Well, yeah, they have to provide the service that people want, but people do want that, you know, want uh, protection. So that's something we can look out also. Uh, I'm trying to see if we have any 
does it is it just that I I don't have any questions <laughs> or uh, I'm not doing this technology right I'm trying to see here let let me take a look Oh, yeah, I'm not in the chat room, so I guess I have to be. Let me, I'm sorry. I apologize for that. Thank you, Brian, from We Are Change Alabama. I'm a little tech. There we go. I apologize for that. Uh, so let's see. Do we have any questions? Oh, do we have? Oh, I'm in the chat room. I guess there's no questions here. Well, <laughs> uh, again, let me just uh, sum up. Our biggest enemy, I believe, is in our heads, whether it's the fear or the idea that we hold that um, government is legitimate and it's getting past that. But let's, let's commit, all of us, you can call my radio show tomorrow, I know I'm on during the, the unconference, but take some time off. Take a step today to do something to stick it to the man. Do something today that where you're trading or interacting with other people without asking for permission. Do something to or do something to attack the perception of legitimacy. I'm talking about just questioning. It's like a collateral attack in court. Something nonviolent, of course, where you're you're questioning the legitimacy of government. Well, let's commit to doing doing something every day or at least every week to bringing us closer. And uh, you can, you know, my show is on from 1 to 4 Pacific time. The call in uh, for now is 218-632-9399. All the information is on my website, markstevens.net. Let's make a commitment today. No more lip service to freedom and issues of freedom. We want to live free. You start today. It could be, you know, any number of things. Just go out without identification. That's a, that's a crime. <laughs> Could travel without identification, that is a crime. Do something and make a commitment to where we can say every single week, these are the steps that I took to help bring about a voluntary society. This is what I did. And, um, and let's make that commitment. Because if we don't start doing it, uh, it it's not going to happen. People aren't going to see it. And we're not going to be an example for other people to do. Because why are other people going to take the risk? If you and I aren't willing to take the risk, uh, why should they? So, you know, I th I, I'm not saying that everyone has to get on this radio or has to get on TV or whatnot. It has to go out and openly proclaim uh, and, and, and have it recorded for posterity uh, that you shouldn't comply with the tax code. That you should uh, engage in nonviolent, non cooperation and, and, and refuse to pay taxes. Not everyone needs to do that. You could do it privately and just, you know, in practice do that, but uh, you don't have to do that. Another thing is give some thought to setting up a microbroadcaster. Uh, you can get in touch with Ian Freeman at uh, LRN.FM. Of course, he's the, the host of Free Talk Live. Uh, for uh, more information on that, uh, we have a number of people who are already doing that, which, and I applaud them and welcome that. So that, that, that's one of the ways to do it. So uh, remember, uh, there is a risk. There always is. Even if you're doing it completely by their book, there's still a risk. But the goal is definitely worthwhile. So if we believe in freedom, we've got to start living it today. But I don't want you to forget what we're up against. We want to be smart about it. So I want to, I want to re-quote attorney, U.S. Attorney Ann Tompkins. Attempts to undermine the legitimate currency of this country are simply a unique form of domestic terrorism. Building the free market is now considered an act of domestic terrorism. So we have to keep that in mind. We have to be smart about this. That's why we need a lot of us. Uh, while these forms of anti-government activities do not involve violence, they are every bit as insidious and represent a clear and present danger to the economic stability of this country. We are determined to meet these threats through infiltration, disruption, and dismantling of organizations which seek to challenge the legitimacy of our democratic form of government. Now, you see, what challenges... The legitimacy of it is the fact that your support is 100% compulsory, and that's the problem. So uh, what we're doing by building the free market is, and you know, and it's anti-government by nature, it gives its anti-violence. Uh, we are looking to build the economic stability that you and your uh, <laughs> your comrades have destroyed. We're not the ones causing the, in, in, the instability. It's called quantitative easing. 
That is what is destroying the economic stability. Doing things on a voluntary basis, that is what builds stability. So again, my name is Mark Stevens, author of Adventures in Legal Land. Uh, my website, Mark Stevens, M-A-R-C, Stevens with the MarkStevens.net. My show is The No State Project, shown uh, we're live every Saturday on LRN.FM from 1 to 4, uh, Pacific Time, 4 to 7, Eastern Time. I appreciate the opportunity to be on today. Uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. Any questions or comments, remember you can always call me on the show tomorrow. So uh, before I forget, and again, I want to thank George Donnelly for putting this on and of course Ross for the invitation. Again, uh, my name is Mark Stevens and thank you very much and let's work today. Start today to building the Agora.